Welcome back. Helping Vermonters recover from the flooding. We know it's going to be a long road, and the state is trying to let affected residents know about the resources that are available to them. Here to talk about the economic side of this disaster is Department of Economic Development Commissioner Joan Goldstein. Thank you for being here. Thanks very much. Glad to be here. So on Monday, your department announced new information about the Business Emergency Gap Assistance Program. It's a 20 million fund to help businesses and nonprofits recover from the flooding. What should people know about applying for that and what amounts of money are going to be available to them? Yes, thanks. Um, the application portal will be available on Thursday. And what folks should know is that as they collect their information for damages, that's whether it's damages to real estate, loss of inventory, equipment, all of those details uh, they should collect and have at the ready so that when they're ready to apply, they could just upload those details to the application. Um, what folks will do is upload their total damages, give us information about any insurance. This is even if they don't have flood insurance, we just want to know a bit more about their insurance coverage or lack thereof and also whether or not they've received grants from other sources. And then from that net uncovered damage figure, we will take 20% of that to calculate the award. The ceiling is $20,000, and we have exceptions to that ceiling if total damages uh, are more than a million dollars. If total damages are more than a million dollars, then we're going to have a sliding scale depending on the number of employees. For example, if you have over 50 employees, you could get up to 500,000. If you have between 11 and 50 employees, you can get up to 250,000. And if you have 10 employees or less, it'll be up to 100,000. So we're acknowledging that there are some complete and total losses of businesses, and we want to accommodate that as well. Is this an honor system? I know you mentioned that you wanted to know about other grants people might be getting, but is it really just kind of up to the individual to report truthfully to you what they had for losses? Well, yes, of course, uh, we want people to be truthful. We do have attestations at the end of the application that basically gives us the right to um, get funding back if, if need be, if we paid more than what the estimated loss is. Now, we do have cushion built in since we're only paying 20% of net uncovered damages. So we clearly understand that this is not going to meet all of the need. And so even if there's a timing issue, sometimes grants come out after our grant has come out, but we think that the cushion of the 80% of the rest of their losses still need to be covered. The Agency of Commerce and Community Development has a severe storm recovery resource up and running. What sorts of information could people find there? Well, you'll definitely find the information about the business emergency grant program that we're opening. We also have links to the SBA disaster loan program and general information about where to report damage. We're still as a state collecting 211 information so that we could aggregate the entire physical damages as well as economic injury so that we could uh, petition and try to get some funding from the federal government. You know, again, we recognize that any little bits of money we have not going to be enough, but we do need the data in order to help justify the request for additional. Are there specific resources in particular that you think people aren't using enough or aren't aware of? Well, we do get some of the SBA data, and it looks like there's only been about 100 applications so far, business applications. Now, this could reflect that not everybody wants to take out a loan, and we fully appreciate that. But it is a resource that's available until September 12th. And so we do always want to bring attention to that, that folks should apply. They can always turn down the loan. They don't have to accept the loan. But they should apply to the SBA disaster loan because it's available. And as they piece together the various sources, they may be in a position to say, OK, I can open. And so that's what we hope for everybody, that this program that we're opening, the other charitable organizations also have some pots of money and the SBA could be the remainder. So we, we do think that's being underutilized just based on the data that's been sent by SBA. Now I asked about deadlines you need to know about, also lessons learned from Tropical Storm Irene. You can hear our full conversation coming up this Sunday morning at 1130 on You Can Quote Me.